Okay, that seems to sound good. Okay. <laughs> um, I just thought I'd pop in and do a little impromptu um, demonstration or explanation on the Stitch tab in Embrilliant's Essentials. Because you have a whole bunch of things that you can do on the Stitch tab. And I have been paying attention to a couple of the posts that are in the Brilliant and Brilliance group. If you're not a member of that group, you should join as it's very helpful to get um, useful information on all things in Brilliance. Uh, be sure, if you are a member and you haven't long, um, gone to the group page, the pinned post right at the top of the page has a, an FAQ that uh, Sarah, the, one of the admins, put together. And it contains so much information that it's like having a guardian angel that knows the questions you're going to ask and provides you the answers for them before you even ask the question. So be sure to join the Brilliant and Brilliance group and check out that FAQ right in the, at the top. But one of the questions I, I saw that was posted today had to do with lettering and in particular BX fonts and in particular that satins that were too long. Sometimes um, if you have uh, letters that are, are that are you've enlarged them or the satin stitches are too long, strange things happen at the machine. Anyone that's writing in that has trouble, make sure you know tech support is free and it's available on the Embrilliance website. Just click on contact us. That's the best way to get assistance uh, faster than Facebook because you'll be speaking right with the team that is able to get you solutions to whatever questions that you have. So brilliance.com and click on the contact us link. So back to our satin stitch lettering. When satin stitches are too long, what do you do? So you either let the machine handle it, which can sometimes result in not so lovely um, stitches, skip stitches, extra needle downs that it looks like corduroy. So let's, show, let's pop in the software and I'll show you what are some of the things that you can do so that you know exactly what's going to happen when you get to the machine. So here we are. This is our Brilliance program. And the feature that I'm going to be talking about is an essentials function. So if you don't have essentials, you may want to look at this because this is one of the tools that is part of the essentials program, which is one of the modules in the Brilliance platform. And I have my window here. I have all of the programs installed, so I have all of the buttons, but I'm only going to show you what is available in Essentials. When you click on the lettering tool, always remember that when you click on the lettering or you put your mouse button, mouse cursor on any of the buttons here at the top, the job of that button is shown. So if you aren't sure which one is a lettering tool, hover your mouse over each button and it will give you its job, which is also a great way to go and look up that tool in the Embrilliance manual, which is available on the downloads page on the Embrilliance website. So I'm going to click on the big letter A and that puts an ABC in the center of my hoop. It's a little hard to see, so if I click on the letter S on my keyboard, that will zoom into the selection and I can see the lettering up close and personal. One quick tip. You'll probably get a few more as you watch this video. Whenever you have lettering chosen or created in your hoop, you will have a lettering properties. And this is when someone refers to the properties pane. That is this pane in the lower right hand side. If you notice, it has a few tabs on top. And yes, windows may look a little bit different than Mac. The shape of the buttons are different, but you still will have four. You'll have one that has the color of the lettering, one that has the letter's properties. There's the stitch tab, which is what we're going to focus on in a second. And then the notes, which is how you can add design notes that are saved in your BE working file. So when you click on the stitch tab, you'll see that these are all this type of stitch properties for this selected font. I created the lettering object. It defaults to block font. So block font has its own lettering properties or uh, because it's a native font, so it is different. So let's go to the lettering properties here and let's choose a BX font. This is one that has been installed onto your computer. So I can give you an example of what might happen. 
I'm going to scroll down to my itch to stitch fonts and I'm going to choose the intertwined vine. Ooh, it filled up my whole screen. So let's click on the S key again so that we can actually see what it says. And I thought my name, last name is Shaw. I like the big, the letter S and I would just want to use this center S on a project that I wanted it to be as big as possible. So under the text, I'm going to change the ABC to a capital letter S and hit the enter key. Now I want to enlarge this design and in brilliance will, as brilliance essentials will allow you to resize your stitch files and it automatically recalculates the number of stitches. If a design, a, di a design such as this from the itch to stitch is a well digitized design, it can handle some pretty significant resizing and this one has, I've done this myself, so in the hoop that I have selected, which happens to be my uh, 6 by 10 hoop, I'm going to have, while it's selected, I'm just going to hit the Fit to Hoop option, which is this button, hovering mouse, it says Fit to Hoop, and that enlarged it. It made it 160%.9, almost 161% bigger, and the number of stitches is recalculated right here on the bottom. So it, it was able to, it, the software resized it, and based upon my stitching, it resized it very well. Because I've resized, I've made things larger, and you have to learn which designs do resize well. This is one of them. So I selected it, clicked fit to hoop, and it made it nice and large. However, pay attention, I'm going to put my mouse cursor here, because I'm looking at this letter, and there's a few things I need to pay attention to, especially on letters that have wide satin stitches. Because sometimes when you go to your machine, bad things happen when these wide stitches happen. Maybe you're missing stitches. Maybe you get extra needle downs and it creates a corduroy effect. You're, just, you, you're not sure what's going to happen until you get to the machine. Now, one thing to pay attention to, or how do you know where there could be a problem? Well, we're going to measure the stitch. Because an embroidery machine really doesn't like stitches that are larger than 10 millimeters. That's just what happens. So how do I know if any of those stitches are longer than 10 millimeters? Pay attention to this part of our status bar. I'm going to click on the little measuring tool. I'm going to zoom in so I can actually see this S. So I'm going to click the S key. I, 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 I'm going to zoom in with my little slider bar. Oh, I can't do that with my measuring tool selected. Let me just zoom in because I want to measure these wide stitches. So let me click my measuring tool, put my mouse cursor here. On Windows, the cursor looks a little different. It's not a ruler. On Mac, it's a ruler. On Windows, it's different, but it works the same. I'm going to position it on one side of the stitches, left click and hold, and drag it across. You see I have like a little dashed line across from it? And when I put that on the other side of the stitches there, do you see on the lower status bar where I was mentioning for you to pay attention before, it says the length is 12.7 millimeters. That's just a crazy number. So I'm pay paying attention to down here. So left click, drag, 12.6, depending on how accurate you are with your dragging. Still 12 millimeters. If that stitches on your machine, it's probably going to be the kind that your fingers can get caught under because that satin is just way too long for that area. So let's get out of my measuring tool. So I don't, I'm not going to measure anymore. And the first thing I'm going to do is change the color so that's a little more obvious. I'm going to click on the color chip, click on the color here, and I'm just going to choose a lighter green so that the threads actually um, show up more on the screen. Because you can see this is a true satin stitch. The needle's going to go from one side and to the next side back and forth. Unless your machine doesn't like that long stitch and then who knows what's going to happen. Well on our stitch tab when you have a lettering object selected there's this option here that says limit satin length. Make sure I'm not in the way here. Right now it says none and that's the default. So for each lettering object you can tell the software what you want to have happen and right now nothing's going to happen. The machine's going to handle it. Well, I go to this pull down, you'll notice that there are multiple options. Light anchor, heavy anchor, length limit, and split is the very bottom one. 
a lot of times some of the machines will do the split option. So let's just show you what happens with that. If I choose split, you, see, you get a corduroy, you get that actual number. And that split is based upon this length limit. So the software says, every time you find a stitch that's longer than eight millimeters, I want you to split it in half or in thirds or whatever into eight millimeter sections at least. So that's one option. And it's not a bad option because if we zoom out, this could be an artistic look that you're going for. Maybe that's what you want it to have happen. It is an option, but it's just giving you or telling you that that's what happens. And you can set that length limit to anything that you want. If you want it to be really short, that may add more. So play with this. Do a test so. See if this is something that you're interested in having the look for. I'm going to put it back up to 8 millimeters and show you a different option. This one, let's go to light anchor. Just to go from the bottom, we're going to go to the top, light anchor. What this does is almost creates a feathered satin. So it still has a longer length but it's not so obvious that there's needle points going right down in the center. It's giving, it's basically anchoring every few stitches so that you don't get only log, um, long loops, okay? So it's only activating on stitches in a stitch-based BX font that has um, whatever this length is. So I have it set to 8.1. If you have it set to a smaller number, that adjusts how, when it's going to put that anchoring stitch. This will be the closest looking to a true satin without the extra loopies. Underneath the satin length there, you have light anchor, and we also have a heavy anchor, which is adding more anchoring stitches. So if you think about shine, and I say shine, reflection. And we know that satin stitches have a lot of reflection. That's why we love them because they just are nice and long and the light hits them and throws off. Well, light anchor will still have some of that, more of that shine, but it will not be loopy. A heavy anchor might have a little less shine, but it's gonna be more secure. You're gonna to wanna to do a test sew to figure out which one is the one that works best for you. The other option that's listed here, the final one, is the length limit. And when you have the, the difference between length limit and split, they're very similar, but they're different. Okay? What, what do I mean? If you have a split, anytime the, and let's go back to split here. Oh, sorry, I have stuff in my way. Split. Every time it finds a region that is larger than this value, it splits it. And right down the middle, boom. If you have length limit set, even though it's the same, what it does is it puts the needle down, goes the distance of the limit, puts the needle down, and then go finishes it. So when it goes from this direction, the needle point will be on this side. But when the needle comes back traveling in this direction, its needle point will be here. So it's kind of a hybrid between the anchoring and the length limit. So, and these are all customizable by you and you'll want to figure out which one works for your project at hand, which is the beauty of the test so because there's not one value or one number that's gonna work best for everything. Machine embroidery is an art form and in Brilliance Essentials gives you the customization features for the art that you want to create. Now, just as a, a notice, if you are not using a stitch-based BX font, so let's, let me click on that lettering object again. This was the itch to stitch intertwined monogram font with a needle next to it. This is a, when you have the needle next to it, that is a stitch-based BX font. When you have a no needle next to it, such as block font, your stitch tab does not have those options. They have different options, but those options are not listed there. So pay attention to what type of lettering that you have so that you know what features are available to you. 
Also make sure that you visit the In Brilliance YouTube channel, go to the lettering playlist, and you'll find features like this explained in more detail and shorter versions, a lot of little clips, interesting things, all about lettering at the In Brilliance YouTube channel, all about lettering playlist. Hopefully that you found something interesting today. Thanks for taking a few minutes out of your busy day to join me, and I look forward to seeing you online. Take care.